Hello friends, this video on communication systems part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us try to understand how the amplitude modulated wave is actually produced in real life. I mean, till now we are only talking theoretically. First we talked about the graphical method that how amplitude modulated wave is formed. Now, just now we talked about the mathematical method. Now let us see how actually, how experimentally or how in practical life an amplitude modulated wave can be produced. So let us see how is an amplitude modulation wave produced. <clears throat> so basically the device which actually produces this modulated wave is known as a modulator. So we are now studying the structure of a basic modulator. So what is the basic thing that we have? We have a modulating signal. So a modulating signal is like this AM sine omega m t. Now when this modulating signal is added to a carrier wave so a carrier wave looks like this AC sine omega c t. So when this acts on a carrier wave what happens? A modulating signal is formed which is a combination of these two that is AM sine omega m t combines with the carrier wave. Right? Now this output which is formed, I, I have already given the exact form of the output in the previous slide. Then what happens? This output is made to pass through a square law device. Now there is a new term. What is a square law device? A square law device is any device which into which when you give an input x, the output y is of this form. And that is why it is known as a square law device. So here if you see the output all depends not only on the input linearly but also on the square of the input where B and C are constants. So this is how the output would be. Right. And this is how amplitude modulated wave is produced. Right. So now we will see that how the output is in this, this case. So here we have assumed that this x of t that is input is nothing but the combination a simple combination of the modulating signal and the carrier wave. So let us try to determine the output in this case. So what would be the output in this case? y of t will be equal to b into x of t that is a m sine omega m t plus a c sine omega c t plus c into x squared that is a m sine omega m t plus a c sine omega c t whole square. So now let us solve this equation. So what do we get? We get it as b a m sine omega m t plus b a c sine omega c t plus c into this is a plus b whole square so we can write it as a square plus b square plus 2 a b that is 2 a m a c sine omega m t sine omega c t right so let me make a wall here so let us continue with the calculation on this side so this becomes equal to b a m sine omega m t plus b a c sine omega c t plus a m square into c sine square omega m t plus a c square into c sine square omega c t plus 2 c a m a c 
साइन ओमेगा एम टी साइन ओमेगा सी टी राइट नाउ अगेन वी विल टेक हेल्प ऑफ ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फॉर्मूलाज वी नो दैट साइन स्क्वायर ए इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस कॉस टू ए डिवाइडेड बाई टू and we also know the formula which we used in the previous slide that is sin a sin b is equal to half cos a minus b minus cos a plus b so we will make use of these two formulas so where will we use them so here you can see in sin square omega mt and psi square omega ct we can make use of this formula sin square a and for this part that is sin omega mt sin omega ct we can make use of sin a sin b so now we will do the same so using that what do we get we will get b a m sin omega m t plus b a c sin omega c t plus c into a m square 1 minus cos 2 omega m t divided by 2 plus c into a c square 1 minus cos 2 omega c into t divided by 2 plus 2 c a m a c into 1 by 2 cos a minus b that is cos omega m t minus omega c t minus cos omega m t plus omega c t so this two and this two will get cancelled so what will we get we get y of t is equal to b a m sin omega m t plus b a c sin omega c t plus c into a m square divided by 2 minus c into a m square divided by 2 cos 2 omega m t plus c into a c square divided by 2 minus c into a c square divided by 2 cos 2 omega c into t plus c into a m a c cos omega m minus omega c into t minus c into a m a c cos omega m plus omega c into t so it is nothing but the simple calculation right we just i just took everything out of the brackets and put them into the formula so now let us see so let's see so we get y of t is equal to b a m sin omega m t plus b a c sin omega c t plus c by 2 a m square plus a c square so if you see i have combined these two terms together right and then we have minus c a m square divided by 2 cos 2 omega m t minus c a c square divided by 2 cos 2 omega c into t plus c into a m a c i have taken common in these two terms this term and this term i can take c a m a c as common so this becomes cos omega m minus omega c into t minus om cos omega m plus omega c into t so if you look at this output what do you see what are the dc terms here i mean which are the terms which do not involve sin and cos the only term that do not involve sin and cos is c by 2 am square plus ac square so we can say that the dc term that is the direct current is 
c by 2 a m square plus a c square and I all have already discussed about alternating currents in one of my previous lessons right so you know what is direct current what is alternating current so a c d c all those things are clear by now so this is the only d c term in this output rest all are sinusoids right rest are sinusoids so whenever I talk of sinusoids they have some frequencies right so what are those frequencies some of them have frequencies omega m, some have frequency omega c, some of them have a frequency of 2 omega m, some have 2 omega c, yet other have omega m minus omega c and some have omega m plus omega c. So we see that when you look at the output, it has got sinusoids of many different types of frequencies. It has got sinusoids with frequencies same as carrier wave, some has same as uh, the modulating signal, some of them double of them. So it has got a variety of sinusoid waves. So what do we do then? So once we get this output, what we need? We want amplitude modulated wave. So we use a band pass filter. So that is the last step to produce amplitude modulated wave. So what will this band pass filter do? Filter generally, what does it do? It blocks certain signals. So this band pass filter will reject DC. So one term is gone. So this term is gone. It will not only reject DC, it will also reject the frequencies omega m, 2 omega m, 2 omega c. So now when all these terms are rejected by the filter, what is left with? So what is the leftover? The leftover is omega c, omega c plus omega m and omega c minus omega m. And what are these? These are nothing but the frequencies of the amplitude modulated wave which we discussed in our previous topic. We saw that the amplitude modulated wave will consist of these three frequencies. So what did you observe? So how is it actually produced? So the first step is the modulating signal. Modulating signal will combine with the carrier wave. So they will together form some signal xt. This signal is made to pass through the square law device. This square law device will give output in the form of this y. So here you can see this output will have a lot of different ranges of frequencies. Then it will be made to pass through a band pass filter. So what will this filter do? It will block everything else other than the amplitude modulated wave. So it will block everything else. So it will keep only all that is needed for a, an amplitude modulated wave. So this is how an amplitude modulated wave is produced. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.